I'm sure you've already seen a transition before on a website, for example, from one color to the other, from one size to the other. And I'm also sure that you want to know how to do that. You are lucky because in today's video, I'm going to show you just that. I've already created this uh, index.html and then I've got the main CSS. I've linked the style sheet and then here I'm going to write a div with the ID of block. We're going to need that later. And that's it for the HTML and then let's go to the main CSS where we're going to just to stay most of the time. So I'm going to start with body and then a padding, quite big padding just to, you know, have a little bit of space around. Then div, I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixels and then a height of 20 pixels. Then a background color of Nine. Okay, then let's start talking about transitions, which is why you're here, right? So basically a transition is a smooth change of an element's property from one value to the other. Of course, for it to occur, we need a change in value. Okay, like changing the width from 10 to 100 pixels. Okay, and a transition is made up of different properties. Let's see them one by one. So you've got transition, delay, which is basically the time the browser waits before starting the transition. Of course, after a change on property. So let's say that the property, the width changes from 10 to 100, then the browser actually doesn't transition straight away. It waits, let's say one second. Okay, one second. You can use one second. You can use 500 milliseconds, okay. And it waits and then it starts the transition. Okay, then there is the transition duration, which is how long this transition takes from start to finish. Let's say one second. Okay, then there's the transition property, which is the property the transition is for. So if you want the, that transition only to work for changing height, for example, you can, you should use height here. Of course, you could have other transitions. You could do something with color, stuff like that. You can add different properties here, okay? But let's stick with height for, for the moment. Then the last property is the transition timing function. And this is basically the speed curve of the effect. So if it starts uh, slow and then it goes fast and then slows down, something like that. Okay. And let's use is in. So now that we know these properties, let's try to use them. Okay. So if we save that, we can see a div, but if we go over it, nothing happens, of course, because we're not changing any, any property. Okay. But if we were to do something like div hover, then height. 300 pixels and then maybe background color six. If we hover over it, as you can see, something changes. As you can see, you've got the delay, 500 milliseconds, wait, and it goes. Then it waits again and the transition is one second. So if I were to, to do something like two seconds, zero, one, two, and then it starts, zero, one, two, it goes back. Okay, let's do something real quick. And then this could be 500 milliseconds, or it could be faster, like that. Okay, and as you can see, the background color changes straight away. We haven't set a transition. Okay. If we were to add it here, something like that, as you can see, the color changes with the transition as well. Okay. So for the timing function, you have linear is, is in, is out, is in, out, etc. I'm not going over all of them because you can try all of them and you can see the difference. One starts low, the other goes low and fast, etc., etc. Okay. But in this case, if we wanted a different transition for the background color, 
maybe a different delay, a different duration. We, we cannot do that, okay? So in this case, we are going to use the transition shorthand property, which uh, works like this. So let's comment this out, okay? So we just have transition, okay? So you've got the property, duration, timing function, and delay. The only properties required are transition property and transition duration. The other ones are not required and you can omit them. So basically you can just not write them. So the delay, the default delay is zero and the default timing function is is. So the property in this case, height. Then duration 500 milliseconds is in and then 100 milliseconds. So this is just for the height, okay? The cool thing about using this shorthand property is that you can then add background color. Then you can do something like two seconds, then is in out. Then here you can do something like zero, or maybe you can just don't write anything, okay? You can save it, and as you can see, you've got a different transition. So the height is already down here, down there, and the color is still changing. So you set two different transitions. You could even have them in two separate lines, something like that. Okay, if you save it, it still works, as you can see, which is kind of cool because you've got different lines and it's better like that, okay? So as you can see, you can do a lot of things with this transition. You could even use it with transform. Let's actually try that quickly to create a cool effect. So let's do something like this. Let's delete that and comment this out like that. Perfect. So you could do something like I the same width. So we've got a square. There you can have like background the same as above without the perfect. Then we can use here transform scale 1.2 like that. And then here we don't want this actually, but we want the, the transform property, of course. Okay, so let's save it. Look at that, so cool, just so, so cool. Look, amazing, I love that. So the transition can be triggered even when I change property with JavaScript. So let's add a little button here. Then we're gonna need it. Bottom, that's 40 pixels. Then let's go back to the index. And here I'm gonna add button and I'm going to give the idea of trigger transition, trigger transition, and duplicate that. And here I'm calling this reset, and then here reset. Okay. Then the script const btn trigger is equal to document dot selector quick this id like that and then down here button reset and this reset transition okay then we add an event listener to btn trigger add event listener when i click okay then our function i get my Block, which is actually the ID of the div document dot query selector, and I get block perfect. Then block style transform. We do something like scale one point two. Okay. Then block style dot back ground color is equal to the same color so 0f91 is 6 perfect if we save that 
we've got the two buttons. If I hover over it, it does work. If I trigger transition, it does work, but reset transition doesn't work, of course. So now we're going to duplicate this and call this reset. Okay. Then here we reset the style and this should work. So let's see, trigger transition, reset transition. So basically when we click this, we add an inline value for that property and they override the ones written in the CSS file. And when we reset them automatically, as we didn't set any value, these are sort of automatically removed from the inline style. And then the value on the main CSS in the main CSS file is used. And of course the transition works. Okay. I wanted just to show you that you can change property with the uh, JavaScript and it still works because you can do a lot of things. You can move things around. If you can click and move something, etc., etc. So really, really cool stuff. So now I think you, you know enough to start using transitions and to make your website so much cooler than, than it is without transitions or your web application, of course. Right. So I'm going to close everything down as usual. And that's it. All right, guys. I've always loved transitions and I think that now you love them too. If you're still watching, thank you very much. I really, really appreciate you. Leave a comment down below and also give the video a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.